Hey guys, my name is Lededrick, and I'm a photographer. So, in this video, I want to help you do your own product shoot until you're able to get the funds built up where you can hire me or another professional photographer, okay? I was, I was approached about taking some pictures, and the person that approached me, they, they've never spoken to a photographer before. So they didn't know how much the stuff would cost. They didn't know what was you know, included in it. Like a lot of people, they just thought you take a camera, click, it's done. It's not that simple. But it is easy. And for me, I enjoy it. Okay, so I want to show you a couple of ways to do this. One way, we're going to use a digital camera, some lighting. We're going to use speed lights, okay? For, with the digital camera. But the other way, it's a little cheaper. The results can be parallel to the quality that you can get with a digital camera. Not quite, but you know, you have your limitations, but it'll get you started. And the other way is with a cell phone. Now with the cell phone, you're gonna need some additional lighting. So you probably have some lamps around the house or some floodlights that you have. If not, you can get those from, say, Walmart or some big box store for, you know, a few bucks. But the key to it is to have the same tone of lights, the same light temperatures. So I'm a fan of daylighting, okay? Not so much in my home. I do like the warm lights in my home, but as far as when I take pictures, I do like to use artificial daylight. If I'm outside, I'll still use a flash to um, cut down on some of the shadows, but I'm a fan of artificial lighting, okay? So to stay on track, we're gonna do a product shoot, and I wanna show you how. But first, let me move some of this stuff out of your way. So what we have here is an impact digital light shed. In here, you're gonna have, let me show you. case, a couple of um, backdrops, and here's the goodie. You see how it already wants to spring out. So my suggestion is take it by one corner and let it do its thing. Hold it, but not too tight. It gets me every time. Okay guys, so we have the light shed from B&H. You can get this from B&H Photos. Um, no, I'm not sponsored yet. <laughs> Due time. Um, this is, again, this is the one that's 35 inches by 35 inches by 35 inches. So we have a light, uh, a cube, a tent that's a cube. Your product will go in here and you will add lighting around on the outside so that the light that hits it will, dis will diffuse inward. You have larger, softer lights. That helps cut down on shadows as well as give the more clarity to the image. That you so when you put your light over here, whether it's a speed light or a lamp, when that light hits this side of the box, it's going to soften this light up and turn this whole panel into a light which in turn will soften the light that hits your product that you're taking the picture of. Easy, it's simple. We're not gonna get lost in the details of it, which I do enjoy the details. So first, let me just take a picture. Let me just throw something in here for you. We're gonna do this airplane. Now this is without the backdrop, which will turn the back into a more white 
um, surface. So you know when you've seen the product that has this clean white backdrop? Well, it's because of what's behind it, of course. You can take light and blow it out, but you have to be careful with that. And plus, we're talking about a little more complex than what we're trying to do here right now, okay? So we're gonna have, it. I'm gonna use the computer to have images pop up as I shoot them to help me show you with the lighting. I'll also add some pictures to, the, um, to this video. So we're gonna take a picture, bring it in focus. And bam, so we have a totally black picture. I did that on purpose because I wanna control the lights. I have the video lights here, and then I have <laughs> two lights just for aesthetics purposes for the back, um, background. As you see in this picture, these blue lights do not show up in that picture. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna remove this for a second. We have a lip down here. So I know that I wanna bring the product up some so that this lip is not in my picture. So we have to put something in here. Let's see, what do we have? This something can be simple as a box, but again, you wanna wash the color because As it appears, whatever color you have behind this will bring into um, will alter the tone of the color. So if this was black, that black will seep through the blue. I'm sorry, through the white. You remember the backdrop we talked about earlier? It's just as simple as this. Now what we want to do here is we want to have this background as a curve. That way you don't see the crease, the corners. Whenever light hits it, too much information, I understand. Whenever light hits it, what's going to happen is this wall will be a different color in this wall. When we curve it, the change is gradual. It's not as strong to your eye. So now we're going to put our first product in here. We're going to turn on the speed lights. Now the speed lights that I'm using are very inexpensive speed lights. They're Young Newell NY560. And I'm using three. I'm gonna place one on each side. As well as one in the background. So again, we have the camera set where regardless of the light that's in the room, it's not affecting the picture. We saw that because I set the settings where my ISO is 100, shutter speed 125, and aperture is 6.3. So let's see. That's our test, so we're working. We're gonna bring our image into focus. Whoa, that's a lot of light. Ah, yeah, and if you can see that, totally blown out. So, we're gonna have to adjust the lights. Let's see, we'll start with this one over here first. I'm gonna take it down to 1 16th. Bring our subject into focus. and wait for it to pull up. Yeah. 
better. We're getting there. Let's see. We're going to turn this light down because again, remember, as this light hits here, it's turning this whole thing into light, a light panel rather, and illuminating all of this space, as well as this space is still bouncing off of the surrounding walls. So we're gonna try it again. We've turned the power down to both sides. And what do we have? And we're waiting. Much better. Much better. Yes, I like that. Okay, so I noticed that there's a lot of light that's hitting this spot right here, and I don't want to have any areas that's just blown out. I want the buyer to be able to see the whole image clearly. So I'm going to adjust the image just a little bit, as well as the light. And that way I don't have any light bouncing back into the lens off of this wall, which hits this here. It's kind of like playing pool. Bring our subject into focus. Much better. Much better. Let's take a couple more shots just to for enjoyment. So you've put all your time and efforts for the last I don't know, three months or so, making your jewelry. And then on top of that, you've also made duplicate copies of the same piece of jewelry. So if we were to put this in here, yes, this is a big box, but if you get this size, what will happen is you can use this size for multiple different sizes of products. They are smaller, but I'll leave that to you to decide which one you choose if you decide to do it this way. Now the good thing about it is since we're shooting digital, we don't have a limit of film. So we can take multiple shots. All the shots won't be good. Get that out of your head. Some shots will be bad. Some shots will be, you know, just what you learn off of. That's all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, I like what I see. I like what I see. Let's go for the side. Now, although those although these are some nice shots, typically what you want to do is try to show jewelry in more of a upright as opposed to laying down. So let's try this. I'm going to take this plug um, cover. You know, if you have kids, whatever, you may have these plugs covers laying around. I'm going to place this up under here. And I'm going to stick that in here. I think I am. Ah, okay. Now you see that the, the bottom of it is more wrinkled now, which is all right. You can have a textured background or drop if you like, because it's still going to be white or some tone of white, but the main focus will still be your jewelry. So let's see what we have here. Nice. Let's take one more. Okay, so let's move on.
Last item I want to show you before we go to the cell phone usage is say for instance you are selling something like cologne or something that's in a bottle. You know, you may have your special elix elixir that you have or lemonade, sweet tea. You know, you may even be a cook. So we're going to take these items and we're going to position these in here. Real simple. Now, you can go as fancy as you like. You can go as far as to put a reflector behind it that bounces light back through the liquid which gives it, can give it a um, more color. Now, again, the good part about doing digital is that you can take as many shots as you want. I would suggest that you try to get low and you make the product look bigger than what it is. And the way you do that is when you get low and you shoot um, kind of upward on it, the perspective of the image that you look at now is below looking up as opposed to a bird's eye view per se. So, And there you have it. Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a cell phone to take some pictures. Now will the pictures be the same as with the DSLR? No, it's not, but they're usable. And the name of the game is light. So regardless of what cell phone you have, whether it's a iPhone or a Galaxy Note or whatever, you know, the other phones are, I just know iPhone, okay? Yes, I'm an Apple type guy. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a lamp. Now, an alternative to the lamp is, you know, the little $8 flood lamp that you can get from, you know, your hardware store or, you know, whatever you have, Walmart or wherever you go. And we're gonna put that on this side, but since I'm gonna use this chair, I wanna put something on it to protect it. So I'll just throw this towel over it. We'll plug it up. And there we go. Okay, so what do we need? Cell phone. All over the place here, right? So <clears throat> we'll pull up our camera app. Now, as you can probably see, that this whole panel is pretty much light. What I could do is, as you will see, moving it back and forward, you can tell how it changes by the light pattern inside. Now, I'm watching the bottle to see how the light is impacting. Oh, it's darker. Oh, it's lighter. Okay, we'll go there. We still have editing that we can do in our phone if we want to, so let's see. Now what you wanna do is you wanna watch the angle that you're holding your camera at, or phone, because that will distort the image, which will make the bottle look more of a cone one way or the other, so try to have it parallel. Now, if you like the look, go ahead, by all means. Just a few guidelines that you could do, okay? Hmm. I'm going to adjust my exposure to brighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn live off, but I think I wanna rotate my camera Now, when I rotated the camera, what I did was I took the camera, which is on the top part of the phone, and I took it where it was able to go lower on the um, on my objects, on my cologne. That way, it gives me, again, that look of I'm looking at it and gives the picture a little more authority, a little more power. Same way that I would do a headshot if I was taking your headshot. 
So let's just turn it sideways too because you may want to put a caption around it. I'm going to adjust my exposure just a little bit just to bring a little more contrast in from picture. And there you have it guys. So if you've learned anything from this video, if you don't mind, please like or share or comment. Okay guys, so now you see the light shed with the black backdrop in it. You see how dramatically it can change the appearance. And what are my thoughts about this? It's worth it. It's worth it. So about $60 right now at the time of taping this, um, you can have this 30 inch by 30 inch, I'm sorry, it's 35 inch by 35 inch by 35 inch um, light shed. Um, a couple of lights, about, about eight bucks each. So anywhere between say 60 to $84, you can have your own portable pop-up studio that you can do your own photo shoot and get your product out in front of everybody. And I think this looks much better than having your product in front of say this busy background, which it makes a nice picture, but it takes the focus away from what you're trying to sell. Be careful because you can take somebody's attention from your product to something in the background, whatever it may be. Okay. So taking it down now, taking it down, it is a little tricky, but a little practice, um, a little struggle first couple of times. You have it done. You'll be popping it up and taking it down like a pro. We're going to stick the front end back up. And again, I apologize about my back being to the camera so much. As I grow at this, I will get better and I'll have a better um, <laughs> storyline for you too. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take any point where you have two pieces of metal touching and we're going to push it in. Now we're going to take opposite corners and we're going to twist it like a number eight or a pretzel. And remember taking it down, don't let it pop up in your face, okay? We have our case. Well, we'll slide it back in. Almost done. Now I never said I represented impact. I just say it's a good product. And we can put our other two covers in later but anyway so guys if you learn anything or if you like what you're seeing please subscribe like comment I'm open to any suggestions to make this better come on let's grow together okay